Hey coders, what's up? I'm Chris and welcome to episode two of the how to make a YouTube video app series. In the previous lesson, we had created the Xcode project together um, and I had also went through some of these files in the file navigator to explain what they're for and their purposes. Let me just pull up our demo app that I showed you yesterday for a quick second. So yesterday after releasing that video, I went back and I reviewed some of the code I wrote last year. And to be honest, some of this stuff is actually pretty complicated, particularly the feed parsing and working with the YouTube API. It gets pretty nitty gritty and I don't know if it's going to be for everyone. I was racking my head about how I was going to explain it because um, I want this series to be accessible to everyone and I want everyone who is watching this to be able to create an app that displays and plays YouTube videos. Um, so for example, grabbing these videos dynamically and then parsing that video ID to grab the comments and grab the description, that stuff was actually pretty involved. So I think true to what I said, I'm going to create a simple version first. And what that's going to entail is a scrollable list of videos that look like this. So we're going to be able to have the, the video thumbnail and the title and stuff like that. And when you click into it, um, you're going to be able to play the video. Um, and you're going to be able to read the title and description, but um, the title and description will probably have to be hard coded into the app rather than dynamically fetched through the uh, YouTube API. And if you're not familiar with the term API, essentially it's just that Google has a bunch of URLs which you can hit and you can pass in IDs and stuff like that to get more information about any particular video or playlist or something like that. But where the difficult part is, um, is that you're going to have to sign up for a YouTube application so that you can get an application key so it knows who is calling those URLs. And then when you call those URLs in the API to return data, it returns it in the form of data feeds, which kind of look like, like this, like this snippet of JSON here, but imagine in a much larger file with lines and lines of this kind of stuff. So our iPhone app is going to have to go through a file like this um, and basically extract out all the information that we need. So I think end to end, if I were to explain it properly the way I'd want to, um, it, it'd probably take me somewhere around 20 videos to do, to complete. Uh, so what I've decided to do instead is, is do a simple version, which I think I can do in a handful of videos. And that way, very quickly, you can have your own app, which has a scrollable list of videos like this with thumbnails and stuff, and you can click into it and then you can uh, view details about this video and then you can click this and you can play the video in your app and I think that would be an awesome milestone for you guys to be able to hit first. So in this video we're going to start by implementing this scrollable list which is essentially what's called a table view and I know that's kind of a funny name because it doesn't resemble a table at all um, but from here on out I'm going to refer to it as a UI table view or a table view so you know that I'm talking about this type of scrollable list. And each of these thumbnails you see here is actually a table cell. When you configure the basic table view, it's just going to be a line of text and that's going to be your cell. So we're going to have to customize the cell to display an image like this and all this fancy stuff here. But let's jump back to our um, Xcode project and let's go into the main.storyboard first. So we've got an empty view here. This is what you should be seeing with a view controller. And if you don't have these panels on the side, don't worry about it for now. Uh, what you really need is this panel on the right hand side and this button expands or hides it and then down here you should be seeing a bunch of these elements and if you don't make sure that you're on the right tab here which is the third one called the object library and furthermore your storyboard if you double click here you'll, you're going to be zoomed out like this you want to double click an empty area to make sure you're zoomed in so you see the view controller in its full size because you won't be able to add any elements onto this view if you're in this sort of zoomed out view right here. So I'm going to double click an empty area to zoom back in. And then down here, I'm going to search for table view. Okay, and it's going to reveal a couple of options. What we want to choose is this one right here called table view, not the table view controller. We want to drag this table view onto your view controller. It doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, and if you can't place it into your view, just double check that you're not in this zoomed out view right here. So double click any white area to zoom back in. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the table view so you can see all these little handles on it and then we're going to add some auto layout constraints. So it's something that you should have went through in the start here lessons on my channel page but you go here click this menu and it's going to give you some options on how you want to position and size the table view. So I'm going to uncheck constraint margins and I'm going to enable all four margins and I'm just going to put click these little drop downs here sorry um, and choose view because I want to position that margin uh, relative to the view and not the bottom layout guide so these ones should already be view the left and right it's just the top and bottom that have the layout guides I'm gonna put them all to zero and then what I want to do also in this little drop down is choose um, just choose all frames and containers and basically what this does is after you add these four constraints it's gonna automatically apply those four constraints and it's also gonna do it for all the other elements in your view so when you do that automatically you should see your table view take on those four constraints that you added and if you forgot to select this little drop down for update frames don't worry you can manually do it so make sure that your table view is selected and then go here and you can choose update frames uh, it's grayed out for me because my frames are already updated. So now we have our table view conforming to the entire view. This left hand side is called the document outline and it's very helpful to see what sorts of elements you have in your view. Sometimes you have elements overlapping each other and they're hard to select or hard to click and you may not know that something is there. But if you take a look at your document outline you're going to be able to see the list of your elements and basically it's also a sort of Z order or layering so anything that is closer to the top right here is at the bottom I know that's counterintuitive but if you think about the view as the the bottom layer so the table view is on top of the view so anything you add below the table view uh, will be actually on top of the table view if you don't see this document outline go down here there's a little icon here to slide it out next what we want to do is we want to add a reference to this storyboard element from our view controller because remember the view controller is where we're gonna add all the logic to handle the user interaction and it's kind of uh, gonna supply the data for the view so right now the view controller dot swift class doesn't know anything about that table view because all we've done is added it to the storyboard. So what we're going to do is add what's called an IB outlet to our view controller and that IB outlet is going to give us a reference to the table view so that the view controller can control the table view. And this was also done in the start here lessons on my channel page so you go up here you click this what's called the assistant editor and if you're running out of space you can always hide that right panel so what I want you to do is click the table view either from the document outline or from uh, the storyboard itself hold down control and then click and drag this little blue line over here and then let go and I want you to call this you can just call it the table view and click connect and now what has happened is that the view controller has a reference to this table view object in your storyboard and that name that it's going to reference that element is table view or whatever name that you gave it and actually here's where a lot of people get stuck connecting IB outlets and maybe potentially deleting this but when you run your app it's going to crash because you deleted it and maybe you added it again but you didn't remove the previous reference so I actually created a video um, it's called common mistakes with IB outlet properties which I'm going to uh, link to here or at the bottom of the video as well and if you're having trouble creating this IB outlet or you're running into difficulties you racing the outlet maybe you spelled the name wrong and you want to redo it um, that video that quick video shows you how to do that and to make sure that you haven't done anything wrong and the app doesn't crash I want you to click this left hand button that says build and run so what that's going to do is it's going to launch your simulator um, and it's going to launch your app. You're going to see this sort of thing here. 
uh, right here it says back to Trump videos, but you won't have that, so ignore that because I just launched this app on top of the other app. So you're not going to have this back to Trump videos, but you should see this sort of scrollable list, and then you can use your mouse and you can click and drag and you can scroll it. Now, if you don't see this, go back to Xcode. Uh, if you see something down here, like a bunch of text, chances are that your app has crashed. Or if you see your Xcode project jump to a line and then it's highlighted green and it said SIG abort or something like that, uh, that's a crash as well. So chances are you, you might have messed something up with the IB outlet. So I would highly recommend you go to the uh, common mistakes video, which I'm going to link to, to fix that problem. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to stop the app right here by clicking this icon beside the play icon. And I'm going to go uh, back to single view by clicking here, standard editor. Um, I'm going to go storyboard, make sure I'm looking at the inspector pane. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my table view and on this tab right here there's a couple so make sure you're looking at the attributes inspector and I'm going to change this prototype cells to one and right away you can see that we have one cell and that's just going to be a basic cell with a label although you can't see the label now because there's no text in it but we're gonna be customizing this prototype cell to be adding the image and uh, all of that fancy stuff that you saw in the Trump videos app Okay, so this is a good stopping point for this lesson. Make sure that you're able to add table view, add a table view cell, and then furthermore, hook up that table view as an IB outlet to your view controller, and then run your project and make sure it doesn't crash. Okay, thanks for watching, and if you guys enjoyed it, I hope you like, subscribe, and share it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow at 12 Eastern Time. Bye for now.